Hey everybody, it's Matt here from Pianoblog.com and this is the second video in the three-part video series that I started last video where I'm talking about some general principles of solving technical problems. So in the last video, if you haven't seen it already, you want, might want to go back and watch it. I talk about how important it is to define your technical problems in very specific terms. So that instead of just saying something like, this passage is hard, or I can't play this passage quickly enough, uh, you think about the exact specific movement patterns that you use. And that was the first part of the process. And then there are two more general, very kind of broad steps that you want to think about. So the second step that we'll talk about today is figuring out the most efficient movement pattern that you can use uh, and practicing your technical, your way out of that technical problem, and ingraining a good movement pattern. And then the third step is, of course, repeating and drilling that movement pattern, and then in some cases going back and, and maybe taking stock again of what movement pattern you want to use, because it is a cyclical process and there are cases where you'll get going with a specific movement pattern and uh, you'll be practicing it and then you realize, oh, this isn't working as well as I thought it would. So let's talk a little bit about the second step in this process today, uh, which is trying to think about using that first step, that definition of the, the technical problem that you're having, or that very accurate description of the technical problem you're having, to try and figure out a movement pattern that's very efficient. And there are really a million different technical problems you can have, and lots of different variations of movement patterns, and it's even more complex because often there are different solutions to the same technical problem. But I'm just going to pick one and try and give you some helpful advice on how, how you might think about this as process. So this is more a video about the process of thinking about the problem and not so much about a specific uh, piece of technical advice. So um, let's talk about a, a staccato passage. This is something that people have a lot of trouble with or many students come in uh, have it, have trouble playing passages of extended staccatos um, of, a, of a few few notes or more. Uh, one example would be the opening of a, a Haydn sonata. So you see we have this string of staccatos and I'm going to try and replicate a problem I see uh, in many students, although once you practice good technique, sometimes it's hard to reproduce bad technique. Um, but I'll, I'll try and give you just a sense, even though it might seem exaggerated. So a lot of times with a staccato passage like that, you would see something like, something like this, or, and there would be a general sense of, and I know that might seem exaggerated, uh, but there might be, there's a general sense of, there's tension here, in my arm and I can't maybe I can't play the passage as fast as I want to or I just don't feel like I have as much control over this staccato passage work so let me show you uh, first how I would define this in specific terms so this is a little bit of a rehash of the last video but a vague way of defining this would be uh, I can't play these staccatos very well. And, and that would lead to practice of just repeating this passage over and over again, like this. And unfortunately, that would ingrain the bad movement pattern more and more. Something that's a little more specific would be, I'm developing some tension in my arm uh, in this passage. That would be a little more specific. And then a really good specific way of framing the technical problem would be, uh, when I play from this staccato to this staccato to this staccato, in between those, I'm developing tension in my arm. It seems like after each staccato, there's more and more tension in the forearm, and because of that, I'm limited in my control and my ability to play the passage. And this is a really good, very detailed way of framing this problem that's going to lend you to thinking logically about some possible solutions. Um, and the reason this is better than just saying, I feel tense when I play this, is that when you, when you say or think about the problem as in between each staccato, I'm developing some tension, you start to think along the lines of, how can I get rid of tension in between each staccato? And how can I play each of these staccatos in a way that's very controlled 
that starts from a point of very low tension in the arm. So you see you're in a completely different world of thought than you would be if you were just saying to yourself, I have trouble with this passage and I'm going to play it over and over again and, and just generally try and relax. That's a huge mistake that people make with relaxation and tension is they try and generally relax. They say, okay, I'm going to just relax. Um, you know, it's, that's as good as telling someone who's anxious, just don't be anxious. It doesn't work. You need much more specific advice um, than that. So there are actually different ways of solving this problem and you'll hear different techniques for playing staccato from different teachers, but I'll show you one way that you might start thinking about this. So once you've defined the problem like that, as I'm having trouble in between each of these, you might start looking for exactly where the tension develops. And I can tell you, if you're like most students, you'll find that the tension develops because you're trying to play the staccato from above the key, which is a little bit difficult to do because you have to accelerate the hand so quickly. And then when you're above the key, you're actually holding tension here. Now this isn't all the case, uh, all, always the case. There are times, for instance, where you, uh, you can get a very good type of staccato passage work from above the key from the wrist. But this is what you see a lot of times. And that might lead you to start thinking, okay, if there's tension developing between the notes, what if I pause after every single staccato and make sure I'm resting on the next key and I can try playing staccato from that next key. Like this. So you notice that instead of playing above, I'm actually popping my wrist up and then I'm resting on the next hand position. And this would give me a new pattern to practice. So you see, I've defined things very clearly and then that's led me down one way of thinking. Now, I'm making it seem like, of course, it would be obvious to think this, like, oh, there's tension in between each, so maybe I can pause and staccato on each. And of course, that's not the case. Just knowing how to play a staccato from the key efficiently is a whole interesting technical uh, element in and of itself, and that's why I have many videos on the subject of playing technique. And if I can make a plug for myself, you can sign up for some of these free videos. I'll put a link below this uh, video if you want. Uh, you can sign up for, for some of these free videos on pianoblog.com where I talk more about the specifics of how you would approach different movement patterns. Uh, and that would be, I can't really get into that now because it would make the video hours and hours long. There's just a lot to talk about. But you can see how by defining the problem clearly and then thinking very specifically about how I can correct the motor pattern, that gives me a specific way to practice that I can then use when I'm doing the third step of the process, which we'll talk about next time. So I hope you found that helpful. Uh, you can always read more and view more videos at pianoblog.com, and I'll see you in the next video.